G'day guys, welcome to Collie, where everyone's on Molly and they are all jolly. Now, what I'm doing here, I'm just starting the Mundell track that I started before. It starts from Mundaring, goes down to Albany. I did the first part, so I'll link that video up the top, just made a little short film about that. The second part from Dwelling Up to Collie is really boring. There is nothing to see, nothing to do. It's all gravel roads where you can do about 80 kilometers an hour. So just starting Collie now, I'm gonna finish off the track and we'll talk more on the car. Before we get to the car, we'll just have a look at where Collie is on this wonderful flat earth. So this is earth, this is Australia. Out to the west of Australia, we have Western Australia. In the southwest corner, we have Southwest Western Australia. If you zoom in a bit, here is where everyone plays Minecraft. To the west of that is Collie, AKA California. This general area is where we'll be exploring today. All right, so we're just coming to Collie. Now, the reason I'm starting in Collie is because I have done the first two parts of it at a different time. And I think from here south is gonna be the more interesting portion of the trip. Now, the track itself is basically a long detour using forestry roads in between towns. It's not so much about the track. The track's not that exciting, although it can look nice at times. But the idea is to get people exploring different parts of the southwest and getting out into the bush a little bit more than just on the coast. So with that in mind, I'm in Collie today, just going to check out some of the bigger attractions. But I have not timed it very well. It's actually a long weekend and it's also school holidays. So things are going to be busy. So I'm up early to try and beat the crowds. And there are some places I might not get to but that's cool, you can always come back. First thing we're gonna check out is Wellington Dam, where there is the mural, you've probably seen it, but we're just gonna head down there. So we're just coming down Wellington Dam Road. This is the same road you take to get to a few of the good campsites around here that were all booked out, so I couldn't get them. And it's how you come down to see Honeymoon Pool. I'm not sure if I'll drop into Honeymoon Pool. I went through there yesterday, it's fully packed, and it's early morning, I don't really wanna wake everyone up. You can't actually get to Honeymoon Pool without driving past all the campsites, which I think is a pretty stupid setup that they've got there, but it is what it is. So we're just gonna carry on down to Wellington Dam. Now you can walk out along the dam. It is quite peaceful at the moment because it's early. This is obviously the new part of the dam. The original dam was only nine meters tall. When I say new, it's probably 60, 70 years old, but um, there's a trail that goes from here down to Potter's Gorge. But I drove down to Potter's Gorge yesterday and it's not that interesting. So just gonna walk across the dam and back and then we'll probably head off to Black Diamond Lake. So just to the west of town, we've got Black Diamond Lake. It is just an abandoned mine site that is quite picturesque, has really blue water. I don't think you're sort of meant to swim in here.
So this is Black Diamond Lake where the diamonds are black and the Now this is an old abandoned mine site. It's good for kayaking and stand up paddle boarding, stuff like that. There are warning signs saying not to put your head under or that you might have some skin irritation. A little bit cold this morning for myself. Nobody knows why it's so blue. There's a lot of theories from scientists, but I'm pretty sure someone dropped a box of blue crayons in there and that is the reason that it's so blue. On the other side of town, we've got Stockton Lake. Stockton Lake is a bit bigger than Black Diamond Lake and with all that extra space, it is suited for people trying to do wakeboarding. It is located right next to the motocross track. So we're just taking that same Wellington Dam road that comes in, does Honeymoon Pool as well. And we'll just have a drive through Honeymoon Pools just so you can see what the campsites look like. Um, this is where I wanted to camp, not Honeymoon itself, but I think it's Stone Gorge or something like that. This is where you pull into Stone Brook, Gelcoat and Honeymoon Pool. I originally wanted to camp at Stone Brook. It's booked out for school holidays and long weekend. Honeymoon Pool is a one-way entry and that means you have to drive past all of the camp spots and the campsites are a little bit too bunched up. I think Stonebrook is a bit better. You get a bit more privacy. It's not really anywhere to park here at the moment. It's a bit busy, but this is another place you can check out. I came here yesterday. I did manage to find parking yesterday. I just had a walk around, but I didn't film anything. Now our next location, we go straight past Honeymoon Pool on the same road. We're going to keep going, we're going to head out to Gnomesville, which is just uh, southwest of Collie, and then we'll head off to Boyer Brook via Glen Mervyn Dam. Some little people there. Yeah, you, you're little. So Gnomesville is located on a roundabout. There is plenty of parking. When I went, it was very busy and it's something you just spend 20 minutes at. It's not really a whole lot to do. Uh, it all started a few decades ago with Mr. and Mrs. Gnome, and they got a little bit randy after a few bottles of rum. And as we know, uh, gnomes tend to breed very fast, they have a very short gestation period. And before you know it, you have a population of 7,000 gnomes living on a roundabout, not paying taxes, uh, so I'm not really sure how I feel about Gnomesville. So after we leave Gnomesville, we are going to head over to Glen Mervyn Dam on the way to Boyer Brook. Now, I know you guys love large bodies of water, so this is really going to prick up your ears. This is a really large body of water and one of the few places, uh, one of the few inland places in WA where whaling is actually legal. So, you know, good luck. Go out there with your harpoon, see what you can find. And another good thing about Glen Mervyn Dam is that it is a free camp spot on the west bank of the dam. You can camp up. When I went there, it didn't even look that busy. I wasn't staying in the area, so we kept driving on, but it does look like a good place to camp.
After leaving Glen Mervyn Dam, I went down towards Boyup Brook and I dropped in at Harvey Dixon's Country Music Centre. After ringing the air horn and waiting around patiently, nobody arrived, so I decided to go in and have a look. I'm not 100% sure what this is all about, but when I went there, it was quite empty. After the confusion of failing to find another living soul at Harvey Dixon's Country Music Centre, I retired to a hip camp just to the southwest of Boyup Brook. This is called Blackwood River Estate, and I highly recommend it as long as you are self sufficient with your own toilet and shower, then you'll have no drama staying here. This was my base for the night before setting off down towards Walpole with a few hikes along the way. Did somebody say large bodies of water?